Hey guys, it's Dr. Amanda Noel and welcome back to my channel, to our channel. And today's topic is twin flame reunion after separation. And I wanted to address what it feels like, debunk a couple of myths and give you some tips to help you come back into your union with more positivity, with more hope, stability and tools so that you can have a rocking journey. So I first will start with, I think, one of the biggest myths out there, which is that after we have that separation and we go inward and we do all this healing and then our beloved is doing the same, we come into union and it's just like all rainbows and butterflies and we've seen the light and we've ascended and it's like, it's perfect. I have found that on some level, there is this divine perfection, this holy light, this love that heals all, like there's a healing that's happened. It's kind of like if you've ever had an injury, let's say somebody gets into a, an accident and they break a bone, they're able to heal it and they, they get back on their feet again and time goes by and their, their leg is great. Yet there will always be that that scar tissue or that memory, even if we do healing work on it. It's maybe sort of like good as new. And also there's this, that's a spot that was tender and we'll have to remember, be more careful. So this is not a bad thing. If you have met your twin flame and you guys are in separation and you come back together and you revisiting, well, hey, you did this to me and this happened and I wasn't doing that great and you have this space of forgiveness and compassion and understanding, we still will want to watch out for what are those old patterns? What are those wounds? Where are we coming from? Where are they coming from? So that's why it's important for both parties to come forth with massive responsibility, taking ownership over one's emotions, which sometimes can be challenging. Sometimes people have to work with a mentor or guide like us, Twin Flame Alchemist, to even learn how to identify emotions in their bodies, to activate, shut down areas in their sacral chakras due to early childhood or even past life traumas. But we want to take responsibility for what we're doing and really for our whole experience. So I know when I got back into Twin Flame Union, the reunion happened after we had a, it was kind of like a week of completely cutting each other out, no social media, no contact, but actually a two month trial period of taking the engagement ring off and um, really not knowing were we gonna come back together, we were gonna make it or we were gonna break it. And it was very intense time. When we both took responsibility for our own lives again, all of a sudden, it became lighter for the other person. So that's so important. If you are in twin flame separation right now, when you get back with your person, really taking charge of your own life, taking responsibility for your career, your purpose, your ascension, your health, your finances, your whatever it is, your happiness, it all depends on us. And we know when we get back into that game, when we get back into union, it can be very tempting to, let's say, let the arms of the twin flame union, the magic, the soul connection, that rapture want to lift us up so much that we're elevated that we don't always remember like, hi, we're human. We have wounds and patterns and insecurities and shortcomings and we make mistakes. So when we come back after the separation, it's important to know our limits and to know our flaws. Yeah, we all have them. I have them. My twin flame has them. Yeah, so when we're back into the arms of our, our other half, our human is there as well as our sacred, sovereign soul, our higher self, the oneness with all the answers and all the beauty and all the sacred sexuality and all the incredible tantric kundalini bliss, all the benefits of the twin flame sacred union. So it's like we, we got both, right? We've got the alchemical gold and we've also got the lead grounding us at that root chakra where every single chakra from the most basic red survival to the most light out of the body chakras, you know, even our seventh chakra, the crown chakra, we've got all this divine wisdom. Yet, if we don't integrate them, then we're kind of a mess. So here is the thing, when we come back with our person, we've got to create a new, new agreement. 
where it's completely normal and safe and okay to be messy. That is a sacred union. That is a sacred union here on earth. It's a relationship where you will expect to hurt and be hurt sometimes. Now, this does not mean that we can intentionally hurt our partners, that we can come with vengeance. Because if you're in a twin flame union, you know that your other half of your soul is a mirror. And why would you want to spray paint toxic graffiti letters on the mirror or throw, you know, like smash the mirror into pieces? We're pointing those fingers at ourselves when we're doing that. We're just making it harder for ourselves. And yet, it's kind of challenging, right? When we have this person in our lives and they're not behaving the way that we want. They're not treating us the way that we want to be treated. They're not speaking to us in the tone that we want. It can be enraging, frustrating, hurtful, painful. And this is par for the course of the human journey. Even the most enlightened twin flame souls can come in incarnating into families with ancestral trauma, with wounds from past wars or rape traumas or, you know, all kinds of things, genocides. I know I have this in my lineage. Maybe you have it in yours, slavery, or even families that enslaved and did dark things. And there's karmas. I come from a family of Jewish mafia that um, have a lot of question marks. We have to take responsibility for our own pain. Does this mean that we are our own pain? No. It's not that. However, the twin flame journey is about two adults, two people who come into their wholeness. And when we have our wholeness, we have our beautiful whole selves. And we also have our buttholes, the poop, the stink, the mess, right? Am I right or what? Like, it's sorry. I'm sorry. Like, if you are waiting to be this angel, this enlightened and ascended twin flame, well, your, sh your shit don't stink. <laughs> Probably not going to work out so well. So I know there are a lot of twin flame gurus and spiritual teachers out there, and they, they teach that, like, there's this one perfect person, and it can save your soul, and, you know, buy now, sign up, become part of our cult. It just doesn't end well. Instead of giving our power away, if we can give more to ourselves and find those things that really feed our souls. And then when the mess comes up, if you're having a down day, if your twin flame is having a rough patch, if they're not in a great place, then when they go off, then you don't feel so bad. You feel better than you would if you didn't have that support. So the key here, as I always teach, is love yourself. Love or love thyself. Heal or heal thyself. Twin flame, twin flame yourself. And then you'll have a mirror. And if you have a moment without a beautiful mirror in front of you, just like we walk through life with not a million mirrors in front of us, if we can validate ourselves and say, I look amazing without having to see myself in the mirror. I might look like crap today, but I am amazing. I'm beautiful. And that's a metaphor for how it is in the twin flame relationship when we're a mess. I'm a little messy. I said something stupid that I shouldn't have said. I was too harsh. I was too sensitive and I didn't stand up. I didn't put that boundary in place. We can be compassionate and we can come back into ourselves and feel proud because we've tried our best and given ourselves the very best kind of love, which is unconditional love. Thank you for joining me today. If you got anything about out of this video, I would love to learn about it. I'd love to share, have conversations. I'll post in the comments below. Subscribe, like. Thanks for helping our channel out. Namaste. Namaskar.